by the end of this video, I want to show you so how to put millions in your pockets, grow your company, bring value to thousands of your customers without tons of startup capital, just a credit card, as well as being long-term focused. Okay, I'm going to show you here uh, a business that started from literally $0 to doing over 600K. Um, so sorry, 600K, not 600K per month. 600K uh, in the first three months. Okay, so I'm going to show you all the stats. I'm going to show you all of the data. Very transparent about this. Um, and so to give you an idea, perspective of what is happening, uh, what is the business model, um, how does it get customers, how does it grow, um, and stuff. Okay, hopefully this gives you a very good perspective of how uh, the numbers behind a business are run. Okay, if you want to get to somewhere, you kind of need to figure out the, the journey there if you haven't been there. Make sense? So hopefully this gives you a lot of insight. Uh, this is all real data. So please do, um, please do uh, check it out. Okay, so first of all, like always, just refresh the screen for you. And then I'll press right click reload just for you to see. Got nothing to hide here. Okay, so this um, account, this business right here is running on Shopify, although it's an info product. Okay, so I mean, today was a, a really good day just because um, there were like email blasts coming out and then uh, there's like a sell, sale. But don't don't look at today. Okay, look at the, the prior months. Okay, so let's start off from, from June 1st all the way to um, now it's November 13th, right? So you can see here, this is the, the full graph right here, right? So slowly, slowly growth, and then uh, starting to scale. So this went really aggressively scale. The reason why is because um, the message was resonating. At this point, I'm not sure why, but like Facebook, they kind of rejected that copy one, right? And then you kind of have to pivot at the same time, okay? And then this was moving up, a very, very good momentum here as well. And then another sale email here. So it build up, ramp up momentum, ramp up traffic, and then the sale email comes, right? However, at this point, because it's close to the election period, so Facebook is very uh, wonky sometimes. Um, so the politics and stuff a bit um, affected the account, you know. Um, although th there's literally no relevance to politics whatsoever. So Facebook is just Facebook. So that one, you kind of have to deal with it. And now it's slowly coming back, uh, the ramp back up again. Okay. So um, I think because uh, in November that we haven't gone through the full month yet. I'll just show you in October itself, I kind of had our best month as well. So doing over 200K in sales. So that was a good month. Um, yeah, and that's basically it for um, the, the Shopify site, okay? So I'm gonna show you here as well. Um, this is the Google account. So we're doing Google search. Um, yeah, literally just search, search campaigns. It's not doing great at the moment just because most of the traffic comes from Facebook first and then we try to diversify the, the traffic source. Uh, but in this case, we're still trying to tweak and optimize. Not really great, honestly, uh, but you can see you spent over a thousand dollars, a thousand five here, okay? Then for Ads Manager, we have it split between two advertising accounts. So the main one here, you can see, you spent over a hundred K, 99 K, and then got back 420. So I'm gonna talk about that later on in the presentation, but just to show you is 4.22, is actually more like six. Okay, so this is our first ad account. When the election season was finished, there was like a big system worldwide ban of ad accounts, something like that, okay? And so like we had no choice but to f f uh, create another ad account basically. And it kind of like flagged the first account. So like performance on the first account started dipping massively for some reason after the after the Facebook's error, error right? The, their, their worldwide ban, whatever, their, their error, something like that. Then, so we had to uh, come up with this new account and somehow this new account is doing better than the, the, the first one. Okay, so now it's just ramping up span and then the span is opening up now. But you can see, these are just two different accounts, okay? On the back end, you can see here as well, this is uh, Klaviyo. Klaviyo is an email marketing software. And so, um, last 30 days, over $300,000 in sales, 15% um, coming from Klaviyo. So, very healthy numbers. Um, just probably need to ramp up the Klaviyo so that there's more uh, profit on the back end. But yeah, this business is, is, is healthy. It's generating customers and um, yeah, okay. So I want to go into my presentation now to show you a couple of things that I've learned. Then, uh, and also, so this is, I would say it's an advanced video, okay? It's an advanced video. So um, yeah, so I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to um, put like crazy claims here. But seriously, if you know how to do this, you can put millions in your pocket, especially if you're long-term focused. Because this was achieved in three months. So. I'm not even giving a full year perspective on what this business can do. So imagine you have a full year's worth. This is a really, really healthy business, especially um, if you want to get um, 
wealthy, right? Wealthy, not rich, wealthy for yourself, right? If you know how to do this, um, you can run advertising profitably. You can grow your company very fast. You can make a lot of money in a very short amount of time. And uh, yeah, you can really build wealth for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. So this is an info product. Uh, info product is basically uh, a cost. This is not in the business niche. Uh, by the way, this is not me, this is my client, right? Uh, it's not in the business niche. So it's not about making money online or whatever, you know? Okay, so you can see here the ad spend. So the, 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 the first ad account I'll show you was, was 99. And then the second account is here. And then we spent 1500 on Google as well. So the total ad spend for this is 100 uh, so far. And the revenue brought back, you can see here clearly, right? Uh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean you, you saw the, the 600 just now, but yeah. Okay. And then the total is here. So in terms of free cash flow, this business is healthy. And this is literally in the first three months uh, already. Okay. And because it's an info product, there is not much uh, cost to it. So there's actually a physical product part of it, a side of it as well. But I'm going to explain that later. But basically, free cash flow is around 500k, which is like insane. It's really insane. Okay. So that's why I say really you can put millions in your pockets if you know how to do this. Okay. So um, I'll give you more context here. Okay. So this is US entirely. So the market here is uh, US. And even though we're selling on Shopify, it's info product. So the, the, the cost, the, the, the stuff is hosted on Shopify. That's why you are seeing the Shopify dashboard. Okay. And on the front end, there's info. And then on the back end is uh, selling physical products. So it's, it's, I'm going to talk about how, why this is advantageous in the funnel as well. But basically the price point is $700. It's actually the highest in the market. Okay. The, the issue with, with pricing is that if you, if you price high, it means you need to show more value. Right, which means the marketing needs to be spot on. To be able to charge that amount and like people still pay, you need to be really good at uh, value proposition and, and the marketing side of it. Right, so just keep that in mind. If you want to price high, you need to, you need to provide more values. It's as simple as that. Right, so you can see here. Uh, I won't talk about the bully method for a while because I think perhaps you you might you may use this, you might not. Perhaps it's the first time you're even hearing it. But right, so even though like I said before, even though uh, our product right here is priced higher than competitors, right? It means on the marketing side, you, it, you should be able to justify more value. Otherwise, they, they will buy from someone else, right? Makes sense, right? However, if you can do this, right, you should try manual bids. So manual bid is just basically an option in Facebook where you force, um, for example, $1,000 per day manual bid, right? And then you force everyone in the marketplace to get on your level or their CPMs is going to be through the roof, right? So it's a very aggressive form of like forcing other competitors in the space, right? You put a, a very, very unreasonable budget up and then, because they cannot compete with their budget, so Facebook gives you all the impressions. That's what bully method is, uh, basically. Okay? And you can use manual bid for that. So, I mean, yeah. Okay? Um, some advice on high-ticket products in general. For the testing phase, it's actually very painful because uh, because the product price is so high, right? The cost back acquisition is actually uh, high sometimes. So, sometimes you uh, like, are like testing some campaigns, and on testing mode, you can spend like three to $600 without even getting a purchase. So, imagine you spend $600 on an ad set. You don't get a single purchase. That's like um, your heart burns, you know? But then again, it's like, if you're going to high ticket, that's that's the game you have to play, right? And so um, when you test, you need to just be cautious about that. Just keep in mind, if you're on a price high, you, you, must, you must provide value, yeah, okay? Must be able to spend and spend aggressively with mental fortitude, right? So what I mean by that is that you can't get these are results if, you, if you're not aggressive in the ad spend. If you, are, if you just think you can sit back and then uh, whatever, like people are just gonna outcompete you in terms of the ads, okay? Yeah, okay? That's another thing, ad attribution error. So I realized like, after like managing multiple accounts, right, is that every ad account has their ad account behavior. And what that means is that they behave differently um, in terms of performance. Like for example, some, sometimes like, oh, automated rules doesn't work here. Or for example, oh, this one scales faster. Or like this one attribution is better. Something like that. You know, all of them have different um, behaviors, which is a bit annoying. But let me show you exactly what I mean, right? So for example, I show you just now on the main account, like the conversion, you can see conversion purchase value. You see 420 and then 4.22. Right, but the ROAS in actual fact is like six, you know. So four twenty generated, but in in reality is is more like more like six hundred six hundred k, okay. So just keep that in mind. That is something that is like quite annoying for Facebook, and um, they haven't solved this issue yet. But I don't think they'll ever solve it. So yeah, okay. So just keep in mind. So if you are doing a two x for example on Facebook and actually tracks on Shopify, you need to understand this discrepancy. If you don't, right, you probably should track it over a few days so that you understand that, hey, if I start launching ads and scaling, this actually gets me more than what is actually being reported. Okay, that's very, very important because if you don't know that, then um, you'll be playing you're playing with house money and you basically like, uh, you can burn cash very fast, right? Okay. Um, if your campaigns go, I have also realized that if it goes on learning limited, right, you better relaunch. Is Facebook telling you like, bye-bye, just, yeah, 
just relaunch the campaign into a separate campaign. Don't even use the same campaign or different ads. Just launch into a, a separate campaign. Otherwise, um, the po po performance, right, Facebook will just throttle it all the way. And then, like, you'll be wondering, like, oh my goodness, over the last seven days, why is it so bad? Just just turn off, just relaunch. Um, yeah. Usually, like, uh, even the reps on Facebook, I have a rep on Facebook, by the way, and, like, I call them, and then I ask them about that. They can't even tell me the reason why. So, probably only the engineers know this. But basically, if you go into Learning Limited, no matter how much you pump up the budget again, it's not going to go back into active. Okay? Just to, just to tell you. Sorry to break uh, your spirit or whatever. Yeah. Okay? Okay. I want to tell you why this business is successful. Okay? It's because of our funnel. Okay? Our funnel is like a three-headed monster. So that at the highest price point in our market, together with everything else on the back end, we are going to kill everybody in the space. Basically, something like that. Okay? So, the competitive advantage, let me just show you. This is how uh, this entire business runs. We're selling two separate products right here. Two separate products, right? Their landing page, we just run traffic to it. Boom, money. And then on the back end, we're selling a physical product. So, our cost to acquire a customer is only determined by the maximum amount of, of the info on the front and then physical on the back, right? So, I can spend as much as I want here. And then, I still have something on the back. And uh, we're doing email marketing. I showed you Clearview just now already, right? So, you can see how much more stronger compared to our competitors, right? Competitors, are, they only do this. They only do like a one funnel and then they do some email, right? Whereas, we have like two, two monsters on the front can two do two different things, two products, right? Then on the back end, physical product, right? So the amount of AOV that you can increase by is like exponential because you only can, you can run uh, significant exponential ads and traffic to the info, right? And then on the back end, the physical is going to like, yeah, it's, it's a game changer basically, right? So there, there are a lot of things that you can be doing, especially if you run a very, very complex funnel like this. It's just that you need to know how to execute it, okay? So that's uh, just to tell you it's complex, yeah. Competitors have this. So the reason why it's, it's so important, right, is because people think that if I'm the one advertising, why are my results so bad? Your results are bad because there are other people in the space as well, okay? In retail, for example, right, imagine you set up a shop in real life, right, a physical store. Um, there are people beside you, right? There, there are stores beside you so you can see what your competitors are doing. In the online space, you can't see your competition. So that's why it's only, uh, like, only if you see the ads sometimes, you know? You don't, you don't really know their backend. You don't know their funnel. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you the, the funnel right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so you must always keep this in mind. So you're not the only one competing in the space. There are customers to sell to, there's competition. So if your funnel is not as strong as other people, obviously your returns are not going to be as good as ours, right? Something like that. Okay, so this is what hopefully you can learn from this video. Okay, and then you can take away from this video, right? So basically how I always see things is like you look uh, at things in structures and systems. Right, so your entire business is a system, okay? So for, for marketing, right, in general, just marketing sales, what are the levers you can pull, right? So I'm pretty sure if you are watching this right now to this point, you're the CEO or something or the decision maker at least, right? Someone running the campaign or whatever, right? You can make decisions on how you want to play things out, right? So you got a funnel right here, right? So what can we pull? Can we make the landing page better? Can our copy be better? So copy can be everything from uh, the words on the landing page. Have you split tested multiple landing pages? You probably have not. Um, have you split tested multiple uh, angles, right? Angles are super important, right? Have you tried different price points? Can you increase price? Price is a very big level you can pull because overnight, if you want to make 200% more money, just increase the price, you know? But obviously you need to provide more value and justify the value with that. But yeah, price is a very big level and people don't understand this, okay? The more I can spend to acquire the customer, I usually win. Because I have a three-headed monster, right? So I can just boom, 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 and the fire, fire, fire. Where's the competitors? Just pew, pew, pew. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but yeah, basically price. Okay. Then creative. Creative is very subjective, right? Because it's really dependent on whether you can do videos or photo, right? Usually, if you are doing like photo, creative, and then really long copy and stuff like that, like that, that's great and all, right? But can you create a video element to it? Because usually, video uh, ads, right? If you put that in, uh, the competitive advantage is that your CPMs generally lower. Your cost per click usually lower, okay? And engagement with the brand is imprinted more into, into the customer before they go into the purchase into the funnel, right? So people don't understand this because it's like they look at data and da da da. But imagine yourself, right? You are scrolling through Instagram and then you see a video first and then it kind of uh, primes you, right? Um, the guy, Jeremy Haynes, right? He always says they prime you into the, the, sa the state of buying before the actual sale, right? So creative is a very uh, powerful way of doing things as well. And that's something you can play around with. Okay, and lastly, obviously, um, back-end follow-up. This is the thing 
that people don't do at all. They don't do, trust me. I work with so many people uh, and, and I see the back end of the businesses is literally non-existent, right? So imagine your ads and like marketing, the, the front end, the, the paid traffic side of things, right? Is very strong. Uh, sorry, it's not strong, but your back end is solid. You're still gonna win in the long term because you understand that front end traffic is like acquisition, back end, tra uh, back end is profit, right? So you must build out your email flows. You must build out your retargeting sequences. These are things that are very, very low hanging fruit, very easy to do activities to generate high ROI. Okay, so these are generally the five things that I see um, that people often mistake, okay? Uh, let me just tell you, okay? If your ads are not profitable, it's your copy. It's 100% your copy because uh, you're probably selling the wrong message to the wrong audience. It's either, either these two, right? So you're selling them wrongly because they're not resonating with that message or the audience couldn't care less. So you are selling to the wrong people, okay? Price is generally not the issue because if, if your return is not good, um, Price is never issue. It's how much value you can bring, okay? So don't think that I should decrease the price. You should never decrease price. You should always maintain or go up market. Going up market will allow you to have more margin to play with so that you can spend more to acquire the customer. It's like as simple as that, right? Creative, creative is subjective because it takes time. And uh, people often think that they need to be some professional film set. Like this camera, um, I mean, I, I did photography last time, but basically this camera, I'm, I'm sitting in my room. I have one light box here. And generally, a lot of the converting ads that uh, we create for our clients, right? They're all shot on iPhone. They're literally shot on iPhone. And no microphone, no, no fancy setup, no nothing. Okay, so just keep that keep in mind. And lastly, backend follow-up. So backend follow-up, like I said, email plus retargeting. Why people don't do email? Because it's incredibly boring. <laughs> okay, just to tell you. I, I actually created a YouTube video on, on Klaviyo on how to do it as well. And, and people, people do watch it, but they don't implement. Right? They don't implement because they don't understand the, the return that it gets. That's all. Right? If you, if you know something good is going to get a return, you're going to do it. Right? But if you don't, if you're unaware of things that you don't know, obviously you're not going to do it. Okay? So, back end follow up is just as important. Right? And um, yeah. Okay? So, hopefully, um, look at your business at this situation, at, at this current point in time. What are the levers you can pull? Okay? And obviously, I mean, hopefully this gives you some sort of framework or whatever it is. But every single time, just come back to this. Okay? Is, is my funnel stronger than my competitor? Number one, right? Number two, is my landing page just as good? Is it not necessarily pretty, but is it converting, right? Is my copy, that does it speak to my customer? Does my customer care about it, right? Um, is my price point worth the value? Can I justify the value enough? Does it feel like a steal? Like if someone sees that and like, hey, that's a steal, I'm gonna buy it, it's underpriced, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, three, creative, is it, uh, is it engaging enough, right? Is it converting enough? Does it hook people? Yeah, okay, attention is important. And backend follow-up, uh, are you consistent in your backend? Are you just giving up after, are you following up with them over 30 to 60 with a windows? You might think it's crazy, but people buy from you over a long period of time because trust is established over a long period of time, right? And as I said before, this is the last slide of my presentation, but it comes back to the front again, right? Are you long-term focused? If you can focus, and work on long-term time horizons. Money is never an issue. Because people who stick in the game for the longest period of time always win, right? You just have to keep pushing, keep pushing. You're gonna see exponential returns. You just have to put the work in and that's it, okay? Hopefully this is useful for you. I know this is a bit advanced of a video, but yeah, it's pretty much it. Hopefully you can see it, like, I mean, every, everything, right? Everything from front to back. I didn't want to go through a lot of ads um, during this because I think uh, offer is more important than ads, honestly, but yeah. Thank you for watching the video and yep, see you in the next, see you in the, sorry, see you in the next one. Okay.